Good afternoon, YouTube. Uh, this is a continuation, part two of the conversation of uh, Maxime Bernier and Ezra Levant. Uh, I kind of overlapped them so that at the beginning of this video, you could see Max addressing the issue of uh, why he left the Conservatives again, uh, just because I kind of want to reinforce that issue with, uh, with my viewers. And uh, hopefully uh, we can learn more about uh, what's happening with, with the People's Party of Canada and the underlying motivations of its formation. So I uh, thank you for your time and your attention. Please subscribe if you like this video. Uh, thank you. I, and maybe you don't want to talk about this, but I, I thought that you could have stayed within the party, being the charismatic communicator, being the keeper of the flame, and if Sheer would have won, you would be in the tent, and if he would have lost, which he did, everyone would say, okay, it's Maxime, let's do this right. Why did you feel the need to leave? Because... All the problems we're talking about right now, the party's not strong, the party's not principled, and you're talking about the successes you had with the PPC. Okay, but you're comparing yourself to the Green Party instead of the P instead of the CPC. Yeah. Why did you leave? Okay, so first of all, after the leadership race, I didn't win with 49% of the vote. But remember, I had only five MPs on 99 MPs who supported me, right. Right, including myself, right. and so forth. Okay. And after that, I worked for 15 months with the establishment of the party. I didn't win with 49% of the votes, so our platform was very popular. Right. Balancing the budget and all our platform was very popular. Mm -hmm. So I tried to push the establishment to take some of our ideas for the next platform, for the next campaign. And Andrew Shi and the establishment were very clear about that. Maxime, all your ideas are extreme, we won't take it, and blah, blah. When and they tried to do to you what they did to Salim Mansour. Yeah, no, absolutely. Right. And, and when Andrew Shi said publicly, Maxime Bernier is not speaking for the Conservative Party anymore, he's speaking for himself. Mm -hmm. After 15 months, I said, I cannot do anything in that party. Yeah. So I left, I created the People's Party, and during the election, yeah. that one didn't take any of the strong conservative ideas. Yeah. And they were centrist and leftist, and, yeah. that, and I, I think right now, the establishment is controlling that party, and that would be the same ideas, because they're doing politics based on survey and polling and focus group. So when did you leave exactly? What? In August, uh, in August, the election for the the election for the Conservative Party of Canada was in May 2017. Right. And I left the uh, a year 15 months after that in August uh, of 2018. Of 2018. Boy, I wish you. By 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, I think there a lot of bridges were burned both ways. Is there any chance that you would throw your hat in the ring? Now, you say there's no candidate for the Conservatives that, that is up to the ideological and, and the courage yeah. that, that I think you've shown. I'm a, I'm a fan of yours. Thanks. Well, is it just to, like, like if you're saying that the establishment or isn't good and if the candidates aren't good by your checklist, you wouldn't, you wouldn't try, and I mean, what would happen if all your PPC members came into the Conservatives, bought a membership to, to like, you could raise 300 grand, you have, like, you could do, a, I'm just, is it possible to have a reconciliation? I didn't come here to lobby you for that, but I'm just thinking, I agree with you that the candidates who are running so far are not that inspirational. You have a profile, you came in an extremely close second last time, there's been a lot of water under the bridge in the last couple of years, but you wouldn't even consider it. No, no, absolutely not. Because you could make it in your own image then. Yeah, but <clears throat> they don't want me, and I don't want to go there. Also, it's past, I turned the page, and I know inside, I, I know what they're doing, you know. I uh, suppose you have 100 MPs. I'll, 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 I'll give you an example, you know. I, want, I, speak, I spoke about the abolition of the cartel in Delhi, poultry and milk, right. the supply management. Oh, I don't understand that. It's your obsession with the dairy cartel. Yeah, yeah. But, but you know, the MPs, I had a lot of people that were telling me, Maxime, I like it when I was running for the leadership. I like your ideas. 
but you know, I have a lot of dairy producer in my writing, I cannot support you. I had other member of, members of parliament who said, Maxim, I like your ideas, but cutting corporate welfare, you know, I have GM in my writing, I cannot support you. So I didn't have the support mm. of the MPs, and, and that's impossible. You cannot, uh, if you don't have the support of the MPs, and I didn't have that, with 49% of support from the members. So I don't want, for me, I turned the page, the MPs and the establishment, they're just there to look at the pool and try to win without speaking about the real issues. And that's why, you know, I, I, I'm very happy with what I'm doing right now. It, it, it's, it's a big work, it's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. uh, I need to be back in government as soon as possible. But, uh, you know, uh, I like fighting for the real ideas. I've traveled to Europe in recent years, and I've seen the rise of populist, nationalist, democratic parties yeah. that focus a little bit on free speech, uh, controlling borders. Migration, yeah. Yeah, I've seen it in all across Europe. Sometimes they actually win. Yeah. Sometimes they come in second. Yeah. But they're very viable. Like, even, like Italy, right now there's a real populist movement with Salvini. Um, and there's a place in Canada for us. Well, I mean, Brexit won, Trump won. Yeah. I thought maybe you would be that force, and I know from the success of Rebel News that there are a lot of people who want to talk about these issues I've just mentioned. Mm -hmm. Why institutionally have we not been able to copy Brexit, Trump, Salvini, Geert Wilders in Holland, even, um, the, um, even Le Pen in France, some people object to her, but just the populist nationalists, let's take let's get out of the, the, the UN or get out of uh, the EU. Why haven't we been, is it the media, is it the culture? Why can't we do that here? Well, first of all, uh, we, didn't have a, we didn't have a populist leader before, and I think I'm the first one. Uh, but uh, I think we will. That's, that's our future at the People's Party. Uh, the more we are, at, are there, the more we speak about our ideas, uh, the better it would be for us. And uh, maybe uh, the immigration crisis in Europe was a little bit bigger than in Canada. Right now, we still have uh, uh, illegal migrants that are crossing the border in Quebec. It's still, it, it, you know, it's not sustainable. But you, you don't speak about that in Ottawa right now. The Conservative Party doesn't speak about that right now. So what are they afraid of? Like, what are they really afraid of? The CBC already hates them. They can't double hate them. But they're afraid to be uh, people who say, oh, maybe you're racist. You know what happened to me at the last election? Kinsella with the Conservative Party of Canada, the Conservative paid Kinsella to discredit our party. I heard you're suing him. Right? I'm suing him. Yeah, I'm suing him. Absolutely. It's, it's my reputation. It's our reputation. But they're afraid of that. They're afraid of the mainstream media. And uh, But you need to do the fight. And people... people know that we, we are doing that fight for a better country. Well, let me ask you about that, because, I mean, in Germany, for example, yeah. the alternative for Deutschland, the AFD party, yeah. it's been around for 10 years or so, I'm not sure exactly, and it's starting, people are getting used to them, they're comfortable with them, and, and they're a fact of life, and they're not going to go away, and they've managed to resist the cancel culture. Yeah. Let me ask you this. You don't have the seat in Parliament now. You have professional dirty tricksters like Warren Kinsella smearing you as a racist. Um, you were telling me earlier that um, you were speaking somewhere in Quebec and someone tried to have you banned, which never would have happened in the past. Are you worried that you will be cancelled? You will be deplatformed? You're a pretty big fish to be deplatformed, but they deplatformed big people in the U.S. and the U.K., I'm glad you're starting your YouTube channel, and I'm glad you want to keep working, but are you worried you will be shut out, banned from the CBC, banned from newspapers other than far-right Maxime Bernier? Are you worried that you're going to be demonized? Uh, I hope it won't happen, but that's a risk. Yep. Um, and if that happened, that would be, that would be huge. Uh, because, you know, former minister, you know, member of parliament for 30 years, look at my past, you know, look at my videos that I did a couple of years ago. It's always about the same ideas. So they cannot uh, say that Bernie is an extreme right-wing radical. They cannot, if they look at what I said the last 30 years as an active politician. And so I, I don't think it will happen. Uh, but that's a risk, and I hope in Canada it won't happen.
Um, I was at the uh, coulisses du pouvoir in French uh, a couple of uh, weeks ago. What, what does that mean? Uh, coulisses du pouvoir, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, big, it's the daily, uh, not daily, weekly uh, show in uh, French CBC, Radio Canada, speaking about politics, mm -hmm. uh, like the house mm -hmm. it's in French in Quebec. Mm -hmm. And so, but for, for the country. And I was there and I explained to them and, uh, what I was doing. Mm -hmm. And so, I hope that we'll still have some well, that's good chance to, to, be, to be at the Radio Canada or CBC. But uh, it, it's a big challenge for us. One phone call from the Prime Minister's office and that'll stop. Uh, it can happen. Yeah. Let me ask you one last question. You've been very generous with your time. Um, I think about Quebec. And in, I mean, I don't know, I don't speak French very well at all. So what I hear is filtered through the Anglo media, which I know I'm getting a distorted view, but Legault and the CAC party started from scratch not too long ago, yeah. replaced both the red and the blue team, replaced both the Parti Québécois and the Liberals. Absolutely. Majority, we already talked, is the most popular premier in the, uh, the country based on polls. And the most important in Quebec is very, very popular. Yeah. And, I mean, I don't know how important the immigration comments and the secular you know, no burkas in the workplace. I don't know how important they are. I think people care about that. Absolutely. And I think in Quebec they maybe care extra much because they've been talking about identity and they're worried. Quebecers are worried that they'll lose their hundreds of years of history mm -hmm. and they'll be washed away like a drop in the sea. So I'm a Western boy originally from Calgary and I'm in Toronto now and I'm right wing on a Reform Party, <laughs> Preston Manning. But maybe the hope comes from Quebec. I always thought of Quebec as a socialist place, and economically it probably is. But culturally, maybe by some definitions it's a conservative place. And maybe Quebec can be an example for the rest of us, and that good news can come from Quebec, and a role model can come from Quebec, maybe not on economics, yeah. but on culture. And then on pipelines. <laughs> yeah, on, uh, those are big things. Yeah. But on... On immigration, I think you have a point there. How can we get that to spread to Anglo-Canada? Yeah, but I try to do that. Uh, and but on on immigration identity, uh, Quebec uh, uh, use and, and still fight for their identity, francophone uh, in in North America. Uh, and I think in English Canada, they know what's happening right now in Europe, and they're looking at it and they say, you know, we must do like we did in the past, being able to select our immigrants, and it's a privilege to be Canadians and not these people who are crossing illegally our border, borders right now. So that debate on immigration, I think we can have, a, a, I hope at the next election, uh, I will be able to have a debate on that subject. I was not able to, you know, I was shut down and, uh, oh, you're by Kinsella and the Conservative Party, you're a racist, you're... So I hope that, and that didn't happen in Quebec. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in the media in Quebec, people know Maxime Bernier mm -hmm. and they're used to that debate. Nobody said in Quebec that I was a racist. Mm -hmm. uh, and Kinsella was not credible in Quebec. Mm -hmm. But in English Canada, you know, um, uh, people say, what's, what's that language about immigration? They were not used mm -hmm. to that. But the more you speak about that, the better it will be. So there's a nice, I think there's a future for a, a populist party in this country. That's why I'm, I'm, I'm fighting for that. All right, very interesting. Um, we spoke yesterday, you told me you were having a new show, yeah. a weekly show. That's why I'm here and I said, well, if I go on your show, can you come on mine? Tell us a little bit about your plans for the weekly show. I'm glad you're coming on YouTube. Yeah. I hope you're not deplatformed <laughs> on YouTube. Tell me, um, without giving away, yeah. you know, your, I don't want to steal your thunder, yeah. but tell us what you can about your new program um, and the kind of things you want to do. Yeah, first of all, I will uh, comment the news for sure. I will have an interview uh, every every week with a different uh, person, and I'm very pleased that you were the first one. Thank you. Speaking about free speech. And uh, we'll have a discussion about the deficit and monetary policy with a statistician and an economist at the a couple of shows from now, we'll have university professor having some discussion. So the goal is to have debates and to engage a discussion. And I'm open also to have some leftists that want to debate something with me at my show. I'm open for that. And, um, and, and the goal for me personally is to use the social media and YouTube and to promote our ideas because we think that we have the best ideas based on freedom, 
personal responsibility, respect, fairness. So that's why it was important, and it is important for me to start that uh, YouTube uh, channel. Well, we'll sure be watching it, and if it's on YouTube, we'll be able to embed your YouTube video, your uh, YouTube videos, right on our website, so people will find it, and we'll be sure to keep an eye. Yeah, that's the official People's Party of Canada uh, YouTube channel. Perfect. We'll have a link to it on the show. Great to. So there's a bunch of issues that came up there, and uh, one of which uh, I don't want it to be forgotten is that when Ezra pointed out that uh, you could be cancelled, that kind of idea that your reputation could be so damaged in politics that it would be shameful for you to return, that's kind of like the position that Sheer is in right now, kind of idea, except that he wasn't put there on purpose, he was put there because of his own incompetence. But what they mean is something like what happened to Don Cherry, that cancel culture, um, for speaking up with courage uh, against those that, that really they... I don't want to get into that debate in this video, but I, I agree with Ezra and with Maxime where they're saying, you know, it's a very strong risk, a huge risk. Uh, when you try to speak up for the truth, it takes a great deal of courage. And of course, the Conservative Party, they don't want to take that risk because they don't want to be smeared as racist or uh, half a dozen other things that they can be labeled as. So, um, I'm very, very pleased that, you know, he's creating his YouTube channel. He does it a little bit late in my opinion uh, he should have been doing vlogs during the campaign and so on and like it would have been easier for him to follow and so on and consolidate votes online and whatnot um, if rather than you know other people having to to talk about him and so on um, it would be nice if, if he had that sort of vlogging going on and talking with people you know Never underestimate, uh, you know, the power of your voice on YouTube, so to speak. Uh, especially a man like him with uh, a great reputation already behind him and people following him all over the country. So, there is a bunch of issues, but really it's it comes down to this. I wanted to discuss further what I was talking about in the previous video about him leaving the Conservatives. Um and so on, and the underlying motivations behind it. Uh, so essentially, when I looked at the conversation, I was very much inspired why he chose the route he did, because Maxime is a man of principle ahead of all else. And Maxime, he said it there, you heard it there, right from his mouth. Five MPs, including himself, only four MPs in the Conservative Party with the courage to back what he was saying, and several others that wanted to back him, but because of the situation of the, the, let's call it the personal motivations from within his writing, his voters, and so on, they could not support him, uh, his principles, because of the situation or the scenario that they were in. So, and I get that. When I go to, like, meetings with, uh, you know, say, aldermen or whatever, you know, it's the room is not about what's good about the city, so to speak. It, the room is more like, what are your personal concerns at this moment? And then people will vent it. So, it's it's hard to bring people together under a the idea that you know this is affecting all of us we should we must band together to address the problem unless the problem is very severe like war or a virus outbreak or you know some something happening like that to to a massive scale that will unite us it's so it's nearly impossible without some strong motivation you know you you cannot harness that kind of power um, what I'm thinking is, is that Max is biding his time. Uh, he is in the process now of creating 
and strengthening more the reputation of the People's Party of Canada, of trying to build his power base, essentially, not exactly a power base, but a support base. Um, this YouTube channel will help him to get that achieved. Uh, so, and it's important that he keeps on pushing it uh, so that, because I believe that when the Canadian Alliance disappeared, the, the Reform Party disappeared, there is a necessity that was filled by the Reform Party, with, which then became a void. It became a loss. Um, you might know from, from, uh, from history, Preston Manning was against that. And Stephen Harper wanted to get in government, right? But they lacked, because of the party division, they lacked the amount of votes, which was better because when they achieved the unity, the, 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 the formation of the new conservative party uh, after the merger, so to speak, then they were able to consolidate more conservative votes and then they were able to form... Uh, government, a minority, and then a majority afterwards, uh, which only lasted for, you know, one majority government. But still, it happened. So, now we have this, this burning need that's that's been existing since the loss of the, the, the Canadian alliance, so to speak. And here it is. Here's the answer. Maxime will be the true conservative voice again the the new reform party if you will if they if they are able to consolidate enough seats to form the party in in the house of commons and gain legitimacy then i believe that in time maybe members of the conservatives might cross the floor or be inspired to cross the floor or at least when they're debating in the house that max can start fighting against well essentially everybody and I think he's mentioned that multiple times in the past. But when I look at it, he's he's really he's targeting conservatives because they're lacking the integrity and the moral responsibility to defend the right. Uh, they defend nothing, as you know. It's why Shear is is their spokesman, their 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 mascot, if you will, because that guy is excellent at being vague, at being you know, non-committal in every answer and standing up for nothing. That's what they want to be. They don't want to stand for the truth or have the courage to stand up to the liberal government for all their crimes and stand up to the media for, for, for their biased nonsense. They just want to kind of see if we can, we can be neutral and still grab enough votes to grab maybe a minority or whatever. They don't care about the principles that will help this country to grow. You know, that's why Max left. I am I'm, I'm certain of it now, sure as I am here. Uh, it, the way that he talked is so, so, so beautiful, so concise, that Max tried to show all Canadians that conservatives are not conservative. They're like neutral, not even neutral, but almost leftist or even alarmist. You... you Whatever is the non-committal part on the scale. So I guess it is neutral, so to speak, centrist. Uh, but they don't stand for conservatism, not a chance. Um, there might be a few members left that really stand up con for conservatism, but they're a minority within the party itself, and they have no voice, no power. And what I'm thinking is, is that Pierre might have thought about that. Pierre Polyev might have thought about that and might have been in the same boat. He might have said, well, if I run for leadership, uh, I could consolidate maybe a few MPs to get to follow me, but not enough to, to have the possibility to win. So I, in addition to my family, I recuse myself. Like, I, I'm running the situation in my head and I'm saying, you know, Maxime left the party for multiple reasons, but most of all, because he knows that if he runs, he thinks that he cannot get to the leadership and, and win. That's what he thinks. That's why he left. Because it's easy to say in hindsight, oh, you could have stayed with the Conservatives and waited it out and maybe you'd be leader now. Hypothetically. But what Max is saying is no matter how hard I tried, no matter how hard I pushed, that they just don't want to change. They're stuck in their... their 
their their outdated ways. They don't want to, to think farther than their narrow-minded vision. And I couldn't take it anymore, so that's why I formed a new party, because it was necessary. And that's that's very, very... That's exactly what I, I suspect now. So... I want to say I commend Maxime very much for his work. I, I hope for him, I pray for him that he will continue expanding the popularity of the PPC and hopefully they can get at least in government, at the very least in government uh, and elected officials in government so that they can start building the new reform party. You can call it the true conservative party, the People's Party of Canada, right? It's, I don't even, conservative doesn't mean anymore what it means in the past where it means the right. Now, the conservative party means centrist. So, and the PPC is actually the real right. So, it, it, it's, you can put things on a scale like that, but I mean, the truth is not partisan. The truth is the truth. If you act upon what, what Max is talking about, Max is actually standing up for the truth. It's not a partisan approach. You know, they talk about it's populist and so on and so forth, but it's because it's populist because the rules of the game are outdated and the players of the game are outdated. They keep on thinking it's it's just about, you know, conservative versus liberal or Republican versus Democrat or whatever. No. What these people proved by, by being elected was that the, 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 the parties, the left and the right parties, they're, they're, it's not left and right anymore. It's, it's like a distortion of the, the scale. Forget about the scale, throw it out. There are people that defend corruption, literally, under the guise of the left. There are people on the right that defend no opinion no 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 courage no no depth of of the truth no understanding of the truth and there are people that stand up for the truth like trump like maxime you know that you cannot help but but like and follow the message that they're trying to give because it comes from a place of truth not politics so in a sense you know what what we learned what we're educated you know that's that's the way they keep you kind of you know left and right and nihilist essentially it's nihilism because they don't want you to believe in anything really like it's as though you're being subjected to a lower view right and then you don't have the eyes anymore to to kind of look for the truth or analyze the situation to look for bias anymore but what max is doing essentially he's trying to rebuild a proper opposition party a proper reform that's the best they can hope for at this time to rule government maybe in the future but he bided his time carefully, he's very patient, building up the candidates and so on, and hopefully in less than 10 years, they'll be very much ready to take over government. Uh, because I don't know, with Trudeau, it, it, it's getting scary. It looks like he could be elected again the next election. I know that his minority won't fail, despite the fact that they're saying it'll fail. Not a chance. Uh, Trudeau will lay in bed with the NDP, with the... With the with anybody, you know, like uh, the bloc, doesn't matter, just to stay in power. But if Maxime can, can, can build the party's reputation, um, you know, with this YouTube channel is an excellent step, but uh, I hope he can keep inspiring people around the country. And uh, hopefully they can gain enough power that they can tear votes away from the conservatives. And they'll teach them a lesson. And from the Liberal Party itself as well. Uh, you know, who knows how the fair against the bloc, the NDP. But everybody is for the taking, essentially. Uh, it's up to him to inspire people with, with that message. 
but I hope that people are inspired. Thank you for your time and attention, uh, and I bid you good day. And please subscribe this video if you you to my channel uh, if you like this video. Thank you so much. Bye bye.